Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnitin Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, all that jazz. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, I go as Petey Beats. Really excited to be joined by an actor. He's on one of my favorite shows. You could watch it on Netflix. He is on Ozark with Jason Bateman and Laura Linney. We're talking to Kevin L. Johnson. Kevin, welcome to Pop Turnitin. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Let's jump right into it because, you know, a lot of actors have different paths and they start. What was kind of your starting role or starting venture that got you into kind of acting and storytelling, let's say? Um, I would say college. Like, uh, I went in as an English major at uh, Clemson University. Mm -hmm. And um, I went in as a computer science major and I realized... I didn't know <laughs> as much about computer science as I thought I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I decided to switch majors. Um, and then when I got to the English department, I think it was English 101, we had to go see a play. We, we had to go see a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And I was like, oh, man. I mean, I had seen plays before, but it had been a while. And it. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Um so I decided to uh, sign up for acting classes at the college and audition for my first play, which was the Heidi Chronicles. I uh, didn't get a part in that, but I really, really enjoyed the, uh, the audition process. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to try for the next play. And then I got ready for the next play, which was the big musical of the year, um, Burial at Thebes, which is a... Uh, it's based on Antigone, which is a, um, a Greek tragedy, um, and I got a part in that, uh, and that was my first time on on stage, and uh, I know you're a big wrestling fan, so I can kind of, um, what was funny about that uh, play is we had a ramp, and I think <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, we had a <laughs> ramp in the, in the crowd, mm-hmm. so we kind of broke down the fourth wall. And my uh, my entrance is down the ramp, and of course, you know the rock, Stone Cold. <laughs> you can just hear you the theme song in the background. If you <laughs> you can't help but think about that, uh, which was hilarious because I I loved wrestling growing up, so it kind of came full circle. It was really bizarre. Oh man, I love re- it's it's funny too because uh, when I was in grad school, I did, uh, did my master's in communications. There was. Uh, one of my like my uh, supervisor was also a really big wrestling fan, and he was always saying you can link it back to you know um, ancient Greece and theater and the concept of the spectacle of excess. And we like literally had classes where we were just talking about wrestling, and it was just <laughs> like it was like a communications theory class, and it's like everything <laughs> could be linked back to wrestling. No, it's it, it's amazing. We love wrestling up alternative, but we we love. Uh, we love TV, we love Netflix, we love Ozark. You are on Ozark. Um, you play yeah. Sam on Ozark, is that correct? Yep. And yep. Um, for a lot of people that have not seen it, like I'll let you explain, but like such an innocent character, such a like such a strong character at certain times throughout the show too, with certain episodes. Tell yeah. people a little bit about Ozark and then tell people a little bit about your character at Ozark. Uh, well, Ozark is, um, I think uh, it's money laundering, in in the Ozarks, uh, Jason Bateman, Laura Lenny, uh, they moved their family to the Ozarks uh, to get away from uh, the cartel that he's been helping launder money for. Some stuff happens with his partner. They get uh, they get in trouble with the cartel. So he's like, "Hey, I got an idea. Let's move my family to the Ozarks, and we'll do some money laundering here. Nobody will ever see it coming." Um, and I play uh, a real estate agent in the Ozarks, uh, yep. where Wendy ends up working. And uh, yeah, Sam is um, Sam is loyal. I see he's he's a loyal person. He's a little naive because he doesn't really uh, know what's going on um, quite yet. Uh, and he's got an overbearing mother, which you'll see when you see the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little he's a little eccentric um 
little bit of a yeah. mama's boy. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> he's, he, he's trying to he's trying to gain respect. I think that's that's the way I look at it. He's no, trying I'm, to get trying to get more respect from everybody because he you know he's kind of a pushover. Um, but I think he's I think he's working at it. Do you think I I've, I've, I always ask um uh, my guests like what they think of you know the new streaming services in a digital age and there's so much like content out there. But I'm really curious. But do you think we're at a point now where um, you know, Netflix specifically puts out shows, brand new shows, you hear about these new dramas, you hear about who's in them, right? And people are going to get, I mean, are we going to, because we also see now Netflix also acting like a network. Net, Netflix is renewing shows, Netflix is canceling shows, they're acting like a network. In the beginning, oh, yeah. you know, they were putting on stuff and things were getting renewed or a couple episodes here and there, but they're acting like a network now. But I think... There's still that excitement now when you hear about a new show on Netflix or Amazon Video or Hulu, similar yeah. to like HBO. There's like a prestige that goes with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think because there's, uh, you know, there's no commercials. Um, so if you're watching a show on ABC, NBC or whatever, if, if it's an hour long show, you get 40 minutes of content and 20 minutes of commercials. Well, in on Netflix, uh, I know Hulu does have commercials, so that's a little different. But uh, Netflix and Amazon, if it's an hour-long show, it's an hour-long show. So that's great for the writers too, because they get to beef up the scripts and and get more, uh, definitely get more mileage out of uh, each episode. Absolutely. What is your favorite thing about being able to bring these characters to life? You kind of told us about like how you started, but like, what is your favorite thing? Because you know, um, there might be like a long list, but is there something you like the most about being an actor, getting to play these characters, getting to kind of dive in, do your research? Is there anything you like about it the most, Kevin? Um, I think it can be therapeutic. You know, I mean, uh, you can like when you're on stage or when you're on camera uh it's all about what's the subtext which is what i've always been taught uh what you can't say is what you really want in the scene or on stage or wherever you are <laughs> um so it's kind of like fourth level talking to god nobody knows what it is that you want but they can kind of see that you want something really really badly uh -huh. uh, so that's always been really cool um. Hmm. Yeah, and just I mean, well, in Sam in particular, when I got the audition, I and I saw the breakdown for the role, I was like, I think this guy is pretty much right up my wheelhouse. Um, I like to say I don't really do much acting when it comes to the character Sam, because I was like, you know what? When I did my audition, I was like, I'm just gonna be myself and not going to put anything on it and see if they like it. And obviously they did, even though I almost didn't. I didn't think I booked it. Like the first time, uh, I um, I had to find out from my manager. I was like, hey, can you, you know, get some feedback and see what they thought of my audition? And she was like, well, and she found out and they were going to go with somebody older. So I didn't think I booked it. And <laughs> I was driving... To Charlotte for a callback for a short film and my agent called me and he's like hey yeah so they uh, they want to book you for Ozark and I was like what because I, I, I just I kind of put that in the in the past so it's crazy how things like that happen um, like you hear stories like that all the time from oh, yeah. actors like you weren't their first choice you were like their sixth choice and you ended up being the perfect choice I think the it happens all the time I had um, Lee Shorten, he's in Man in the High Castle on Amazon, and he came on oh. my show, and he talked I'm about... Oh, yeah? I'm friends with, the, I'm friends with uh, Luke, Luke Kleintank. Oh, awesome. That's a, that's a great show. That's like a whole yeah. dystopia. He's, he's, he's a nice guy. It's it, it's unbelievable what they're doing on that show. The cast is fantastic, but he was just saying that his character, Sergeant Yoshida, when he auditioned, it was going to be like a one or two episode thing mm -hmm. and they That's liked it so far too. and then they're like ah we're gonna make him like reoccurring and he was in like 15 episodes so well, well i found out um when i was on set a couple days ago from um the script supervisor 
that in season one, the big surprises, maybe maybe she meant like big surprises writing wise, like oh let's write more stuff, was Ruth and Sam. Which was really cool to be lumped in with one of the breakout stars of the show as a as a surprise to the writers of what was to come. No, absolutely. You got to work with one of my favorite actresses of all time in Laura Linney. She is fantastic. Um, her work, there's so many good movies that she has been in. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, I recently spoke to someone else, um, Jack Murray, who is in Prize Defiance Winner of Ohio with you know Juliet Moore, and I he he talked about you know working with Juliet Moore and how it was a learning experience. I'm sure it's the same thing with you and Laura Linney. It's a learning experience being to work with these amazing artists. Oh yeah, and and personally, she's just a a sweetheart. She is extremely giving. Uh, hugs all around like just like when i see her on set it's it's like we're friends i mean i you know i text her every now and then see how she's doing i you know said hey you know good luck at the sag awards and all that and so yeah we're kind of we're kind of friends now because we worked a lot in season one together um and yeah she's (laughs) she's a national treasure is how like (laughs) a lot of people like to say laura linney a national treasure and she it, is. She's it incredible. is. She is really good. Do you kind of see, um, uh, you know, getting back to the whole idea of, you know, the digital media and, you know, you get into kind of, um, I feel like there's kind of, be, being an actor on social media is like a like a full time job in its own. Sometimes I talk about it too. Yeah. I, talk, I talk to act like athletes as well. Um, you're like th- that's a bit harder because they literally don't like they are on the you know the road. They're training. They're doing that. So are you guys, you guys are shooting. But I find also or like um, I find it interesting where there's a lot of planning that goes into you know what to post what to share there's so many things you can share you have to say what you're going to share what aren't you going to share it becomes i mean you work with your team it becomes like a full-time job because of this shift in the digital oh, yeah. media age oh yeah yeah um and you also don't want to post too much about your uh your what you have going on because it looks kind of like you're gloating so you gotta have to walk that a balance line. yeah but it's good to post um, about other people's projects too. That's always a, you know, a get. You know, you give back. I mean, and then they post about you, and it's you know, it's a, it's kind of a sharing um, thing. And I'm sure uh, with Ozark, it's kind of um, you know the buzz. You, you know, you getting tagged in things. It's it's kind of a lot. Um, it's a lot more you need to kind of handle and put your PR hat on. You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it, it's such a prominent show. What has been kind of the biggest learning experience that you've um been through with you know ozark and then specifically with like being an actor in the social media so i guess it's like a two-part question but like have have there been any specific learning experiences you can share with us that have really helped your you think will help your career excel uh well um on set in general i would say uh since the character has a nice like i have a character arc now that was really cool to to learn and how different directors come in for shows you know in tv you have multiple directors um so they all have their own kind of style so you kind of mesh with their style you show them what your style is and kind of you know reach a happy medium um and then when it comes to uh like social media i would say uh it's it's really cool because you get like people uh sending you messages like congratulations on you know the show sorry about you know whatever (laughs) on the show i don't want to spoil it but people will be like sorry about what happened you know lol um and uh you definitely want to make sure to you know respond and kind of interact with them because i mean i think that's i think that that's part of it you know you and it's great for the fans too that they can interact with. Um, I'll put my I'll put star in quotes. I'm not a star, but <laughs> a guest star of the show. Let's say that and get to interact with uh, people from the show. Oh, absolutely! I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little bit of a 
curveball for you because I find all the the uh, the questions I've asked are pretty simple. But we're gonna play a little. I'm gonna make it easier. We're gonna play the desert island game. But you get you get the, you get to bring two or three things. It's not one thing. So I want to know what TV series you're bringing. Two or three. What movies are you bringing? Two or three. And what artists or albums are you bringing? Two or three of them. I want to know what is kind of. Let's get to know Kevin L. Johnson a little bit here. <laughs> oh, two out of three. Uh, like two to three. Like I, you don't have to pick. Categories. Yeah, you don't have to pick one. You know what I mean? Because it's hard. That that's the worst I find. Like you're in Desert Island. What album will you bring? It's like oh man. Like I can pick up ten right off the bat. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you ten, but I'm gonna give you two or three. Okay. Um. Well, TV show, obviously Ozark. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a guarantee. Uh, the Walking Dead, I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Uh, I, I started binge-watching that like uh, maybe a year or two ago because I had a big audition for it. and mm-hmm. I was like, what's this show? I mean, everybody likes it. I don't know, zombies, you know, whatever. And then I got into it and realized it wasn't just about zombies. It's it's about more than zombies. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited about the, the second half of the season coming out. Um, uh, man, I got really into The Crown after Laura Linney, uh, told me about that on set, because I was like, because when I was like, good luck at the, uh, the SAG Awards, and she said, uh, well, thanks, but I'm not going to get it. Claire Foy is going to get it for The Crown. And I was like, well, it's still good luck. I think you can win. And then I watched The Crown because she really, she definitely recommended it. So, um, I would say those three movies um that's a harder one uh well my favorite movie of all time still is probably dog day afternoon mm-hmm. with al pacino uh i'm a big dustin hoppin fan i know he's going through i know some stuff happened which sucks to hear but separating the the man from the work i would say uh kramer versus kramer is an awesome movie mm-hmm. um Trying to go new sc- <laughs> new school here, uh, man. Maybe Driver, Driver with Ryan Gosling. I'm a huge Ryan Gosling fan. Yeah, that was. So yeah, he's actually uh, he, he's from an hour from here. He's at Cornwall, Ontario. We're in Ottawa. He's about an hour away. Like his hometown is an hour away from here. Oh, he's from uh, he's from the north. Yeah, he's from uh, he's from Canada. He's from Cornwall, Ontario. I, That's where he's from. Yeah. Oh, okay. Music. What what about music? Man, music. Um, uh, Mumford and Sons. Uh, I'm on a country kick right now. I mean, I go back and forth with country, so uh, b- 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 any country music, really. Um, and then let's throw in some show tunes, you know, musical. Something. Oh. <laughs> that sounds this is Al Pacino and show tunes. That's a desert island. That I want to be. <laughs> it's a, a mixed bag. You know? Yeah, absolutely. No, well, Kevin, thank you uh, so much for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Um, it's really um, exciting to you know uh, not only speak to. Um, guests that play on uh, such amazing characters on such fantastic shows um, and I, I for all the viewers who have not watched Ozark yet I highly recommend you watch Ozark um, season one's on Netflix it's amazing um, the whole concept of money laundering it's just the character dynamics the relationships I'm all about character dynamics so I'm all about you know the different characters like th- there's a show I'm watching right now called The Shy on Showtime the shy, okay, yeah. I need to get Showtime because I've heard good things about the and I like Shameless and I haven't. Shameless is fantastic, and <laughs> it, they're they're very similar in terms of the character dynamics. You know, there's all oh. there's, there's a big ensemble cast, and then one character will have to do with in an episode have to do with another character that you didn't really see coming type thing. Like I love I love those type of shows. Yeah, is it kind of like a uh, is it. Uh, what's the, the Wire? Which I, I never really got into The Wire, but a little, a, a little bit. I mean, it focuses more on. Um, I mean, there's police involved, but it focuses more on like the neighborhood and the okay. the the connections that there is because it surrounds a murder case and everything. So yeah, okay. there is that. But it's fantastic. But uh, we have to give a shout out to your uh, roommate and uh, yeah, former guest of the show, Haley Lovett, the gifted. 
<laughs> sage. So we, I, I just gotta say that. But um, plug away. Where can people follow you on social media? What could they be looking out for that you're allowed to tell us? Because I know the whole thing about there's so many things you probably know right now. And you're like I can't say anything. We know that. Well, what can you say? I can. Uh, well, I can tell you that I will be back for season two, um, and yes. it's gonna be. Uh, I wish I could say more than that. It, it's gonna be a fun, fun season for Sam. And the show itself is going to be, it's, it gets even more intense than season one, I think. It's going to be a, a roller coaster ride. Um, I'm, uh, I'm working on a movie later this year called Don't Look There. Uh, it's actually going to be in your neck of the woods, I think, possibly, as well as uh, um, Detroit. So it's a psychological thriller. I play... Uh, supporting role i play detective harvey um so i'm looking forward to getting into that after we're wrapped on season two uh what else american animals which just premiered at sundance is gonna it should be out there's not a date yet but it got distribution so there should be something coming out about that soon um and then you can follow me on twitter uh at uh kevin underscore L underscore Johnson. I I don't know if you have to capitalize the K, the L, and the J, but I would just in case. Perfect. And then then, uh, Instagram is at the Kevin L. Johnson. Very cool. Well, Kevin, all the best, and thank you for coming on Popternative. Thanks, man. Well, this has been Popternative. Be sure to follow Kevin on all the social media channels he just brought up. They'll be in the uh, info of the video description as well. You can catch previous episodes of Popternative on YouTube for the video episodes and wherever you listen to podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, we're everywhere. So be sure to subscribe for the audio-only versions. Until next time, this is Kevin L. Johnson and Peter Beads signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.